This is a NAES Interlibrary Loan System training video on downloading MARC records from the New Hampshire Union Public Access Catalog, also known as NUPAC. There are four options available to you to download in MARC records to use in your local system. You can download them directly from your local system via a Z3950 client. You can download one record at a time from the ILL system. You can download records in a batch using my list, or you can download records in a batch using the download cart. This video will cover all of these options so that you can choose which one works best for your situation. You will find information on how to do this in addition to this video on the handout called Options for Downloading MARC Records from NUPAC, which is available on the NAIS Services training page. The handout includes all of the details for the Z3950 connection. This is the simplest method for you to download records if you have a local system that supports this functionality. All you'll need to do is to configure the Z3950 client built into your local system using the information provided on this handout. Your system administrator or your vendor may be able to help you to configure this if you are not familiar with how to do it. There is a password that is required in order to download records in the in this way. Um, to receive the password, you will need to call the NAIS Help Desk during business hours and we can provide it for you. The password should only be given to New Hampshire libraries. It is not available to anyone outside of New Hampshire. In order to see how to download records through the additional three methods, if you do not choose to do it through your Z3950 client in your local system, or if you occasionally want to just pull down one record through another path, this is how you will do that. For today's video, I'm going to be working as the Lilac Public Library, and you will notice that I am logged in with the cataloging password for the Lilac Public Library. Each library was provided with uh, three different passwords through their director, and the directors were um, invited to choose which ones are best suited to their own library's workflow. The cataloging password is necessary if you want to use the download cart option, which is the final one we're going to cover. Um, the other options are available on an interlibrary loan password or on the all password. But if you're going to use the download cart, you do have to be logged in using specifically the cataloging password. If you find that the view that you are seeing here is different than what you're used to, it is because this is configured specifically for cataloging and the interlibrary loan functions are not available to this particular particular password. If you are using the cataloging password, it might be useful for you to set your preferences so that you are only searching the new pack. The default is to search all of the connected databases, and for the purposes of interlibrary loan, that is absolutely what you want to do. You should not under for any reason limit your search as a default to just new pack because it will substantially limit the available options for you to borrow materials but for cataloging purposes you're going to be pulling records from the new pack so it's useful to have just the new pack searched in order to set that preference which again should only be done for the cataloging account you can go to your account here on the right hand side choose your favorite resources and then you will have the option of selecting whichever ones you would like to use. In this particular case I have already chosen new pack as our default. If you came in all the library catalogs were chosen um, like this then you would click clear all to get rid of all of the choices and then scroll down to new pack and select it and click save resources and that will set the default to be just new pack when you search no other catalogs will be searched if you want to do that on a um, basis for just one search if you're for example using um, a system where you want to do this but you don't want to do it all the time as you may have seen in other videos, you do also have the option of choosing an individual catalog to search through this little stack of pancakes link. Now, if you've set the default to be new pack, that will be your default automatically. But if you have not, you can choose that here. So let's proceed back to the home screen. 
and see how we will download individual records from the system. So the first thing I need to do to download a record is I need to find the record. So I'm going to do a search here for the Gospel according to Biff. I spelled Biff correctly. And see if I can find the book that I want here. So here we have Lamb, the Gospel according to Biff. And I want the 2007 book, I'm sorry, the 2003 book here is what I'm interested in. So I'm going to choose this option and see the full record. I can look at it and see if it is in fact what I want. It's the date that I'm interested in. It's the publisher that I have on the material that I have. I have the marked display down here for more detail. If I need more detail, I can see what the subject headings are that were used and so forth. So this is in fact the record that I want. And in order to download this record, all I need to do is to come over here to this side and I'm going to click on download record. When I do that, it will open up a save dialog box, uh, which is to some extent driven by your internet browser. I am using Firefox here, so this is how Firefox does this. Um, you can configure many browsers to default to either save a file automatically to some particular place or to prompt you for where you want to save it. Um, however your browser is configured, the program will work with that. So I'm going to say I want to save this file and then I say OK and it opens up a dialog box that goes to the place where I have said I want to change it. And I'm going to uh, save this file and you can obviously change the name if you want to make it something more relevant. Um, the default is name is in fact the record number of this particular new pack record. But I'm going to change the name to Biff because that's what it is and that way when I go to look at it later it will make more sense of what that is. So that is all there is to it um, to download an individual record directly from the system. It's super simple but it's pretty limited. It's just one record at a time so that can be kind of a nuisance um, if you have a lot of stuff you want to do. So the next option to consider in downloading records is to do it using my list. I am going to return home again. Okay, another option for you for downloading records is to do it using the My List functionality of the system. There is a separate video that we have created which is available on, um, again, the NAIS training page. So here under videos there is a video about using my list and overview for library staff. That video goes into details about how to use the list functions um, so I'm not going to cover that here. I'm just going to go to where I have already created some lists and show you what you're going to do if you want to use that to download. So to get to the my list um, lists. I use this little icon at the top. It has a number three on it because I have three lists configured for this particular login. Um, for this I have a cataloging CM, a cataloging DH, and a cataloging MR. If you are working in batches for cataloging and there is more than one person that works at your library on cataloging, then this is going to be your best option I think to um, manage lit to do downloads of batches of records. The reason that this one is preferable is that you can have multiple lists for multiple people and you won't step on each other as you're trying to process things. So that's how I've configured this account. We have Christine's cataloging, David's cataloging, and Mary's cataloging. So since I'm Mary, I will use my own cataloging list. In order to download records, I come to where my list is. I have added to it whatever things I'm looking to download. What I'll do is I will select all the records in my list. So here I have Sally Hirsch Dickinson's book, I have a quilting book, I have the third volume of Eleanor Roosevelt, and then I have Kevin Flynn's Wicked Intentions. So we're adding some great books to the li Lilac Library right now. And in order to download these records, I select the whole list and then I go to the save button and I select my file type and my file type will be mark download 
and then I click Save. And at this point, as with the individual record, my browser configuration is going to kick in and do whatever it wants to do regarding saving a record. So I'm going to tell it I want to save the file. I say OK. It takes me to where I'm going to go. In this case, the default name is somewhat more useful than it is when it's just single record because what you get here is the name of your list so I know this is my cataloging if I named my list usefully and then it's a date so this is the 20th of November 2019 so it tells me that so it automatically gives it a name that is in fact fairly useful so I'm just going to use that default and save it if I didn't like the name that it had I could change it but if you've planned everything out um, in a way that is helpful then it'll just do its thing in, in a useful way and give you a good name. So I have now saved these records. Obviously they are still in my list, um, so I might want to come back after I have gone and taken that file, loaded it to my local system, and know that all is well. I might want to come back here and uh, delete the things off of this list so I don't download them again. I could also, however, if I didn't want to do that, I could choose when I'm here to download to just select some. So let's say something went awry with um, the Sally Hirsch Dickinson book, but the others were fine. Even though they're still in my list, I can just not select them and I can save the list again, mark download, save, I get my save file, I give it a name, and here this is the same name I had before because it's the same name, the same day. So I'm going to change this one to have um, a note that tells me this is a read a redo of the Sally Hirsch Dickinson book. All right, so that is how you can do this with your list. Okay, your fourth option for downloading records is to use your download cart. So let's start by searching on a, for a record that we want to add of to our download cart. And I want to look for a book about Joan of Arc. And when, when my search results come back, I want this the Voices, The Final Hours of Joan of Arc by David Elliott is the book I'm interested in. I bring up the full record so I can see the details. I can see the full mark display if I want to. And I'm going to add this to my download cart. And I do that by clicking Add to Download Cart. So pretty straightforward. I get a little message that says the item was added to the download cart. I can say OK or it'll go away by itself. So now in order to actually use the download cart, I need to go back to the staff dashboard under cat admin. Now I'm going to remind you we are logged in here using the cataloging password. If I was logged in using the interlibrary loan password, I wouldn't even see the cat admin menu. And you'll note I don't see an ILL admin menu here, which I normally would if I were logged in as an ILL user. So this is specific to the individual login for your library's cataloging functionality. So to use the download cart, I come to staff dashboard, I go to cat admin, I click view download cart and here we see all the things that are in my download cart the voices I just added and a couple of uh, other books that were here before the White Mountain by Dan Chesney squids will be squids the usual sorts of things that one might want to catalog so I can download these rec records from here before I show you how to do that, I want to talk a little bit about why this is not an ideal workflow uh, for a library that has multiple people cataloging. There is one download cart for your library's cataloging login, which means if multiple people are adding to it, you have to keep track of which record was what and who did what, and you have to empty the cart religiously and be sure that everything is cleaned out all the time, Otherwise, you're going to end up deleting other people's records, re-downloading the same records that someone else had, and so forth. If you are a library where only one person is using the cataloging password, then the download cart is a perfectly good option for you to use. So I'm going to select all of the records here uh, that I want to download, and then I'm going to leave the record type as all records because it really doesn't matter. You're only going to get bib records here. So 
you can just leave the default. Then I'm going to click download. Once again, my browser brings up the uh, dialog box for saving a file. I click save. I say OK. This is called cart records and it's always called cart records and then the date of the time that I'm doing it. So if that's fine, I can just take that default. If I need to put some other sort of notation like my initials, which again, if you have multiple people, you probably shouldn't be using this path. Um, but whatever you need to do, you can change the name if you want to. And I click save and my file is saved. Now in the case of the download card, it is important that you get rid of the things that you are not using once you are done with them. Otherwise, you'll just export the same files again and again. So what I want to do is once I've loaded my file into my local system, I've done whatever checks my workflow requires to make sure that everything is as it should be, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to empty my cart. And it says, you want to permanently remove everything? And I'm going to say, yes, I do. My download cart is now empty and ready to use again for another project or another person's work. So. We have now covered the four options available to you to download records from the NAES Interlibrary Loan System. If you have questions about how to do this, please contact the NAES Help Desk at 603-271-2141 or send us an email at the address on your screen. Thank you for watching.